the year 2009 was the year to remember because bitcoin was launched and what started as a small evolution has revolutionized the entire industry the entire world rather actually and today i have with me a special guest who is going to shower so many light on not just the cryptocurrency but the entire emerging technology which is blockchain technology today i have with me rohit tandon which is the expert of blockchain technology hello and welcome to our show of crypto masters thank you parvati for having me here to start with you know that everybody refers when when we talk about cryptocurrency everyone first thinks about bitcoin right. but nobody really really actually think about blockchain first mm -hmm. but the work on the blockchain really really started on 1980s right, right. if i'm not pretty wrong. early pretty early uh, in fact uh, the roots are in uh, you know late 1970s when they started talking about decentralizing you know uh, uh, you know they understand the concept of centralized and what kind of an evil it can have so you know right. people started talking about and drafting papers on how can it be decentralized or how can uh, you know the uh, one owns ownership on the complete data can be removed so that in case somebody wants to you know uh, delete something on the system they should not be able to do that there so right. yes it's 1970s and in the 1980s it got properly drafted right. and like you said 2009 it was the first implementation of the blockchain papers we've seen right right and actually they started just as a, a transaction uh, i think they wanted to remove the centralized part and they wanted to make it decentralized and that's how the bitcoin actually came in picture but the underlying technology actually had much more potential mm -hmm. than just having bitcoin and uh, that's what we see with ethereum so can you can you uh, tell us about like how this uh, technology has revolutionized the mm -hmm. whole industry absolutely so uh, let's talk about blockchain because bitcoin is a use case of blockchain uh, it's right. merely a ledger system that is being utilized by bitcoin right. or ethereum or any of the altcoins which are being launched uh, right. right now so what blockchain does is uh, it uh, stores your data into different servers they all are synced together they are called nodes uh, right. here and uh, you as a normal uh, person can actually participate in that blockchain you can put up your node you can synchronize it and then you know you become part of uh, the ecosystem there right. now in terms of data being stored from blockchain like we said it's it's decentralized so right. not one person has the complete control of the data so not that one person cannot tomorrow take a call and shut down everything and say i'm moving out of it so that's that's not happening with this one so this is what the underlying uh, technology is uh, where how you set up a node how many people can uh, participate in a node what is a consensus mechanism so let's say uh you want to do a transaction on a on a server you know if uh, majority of the servers have to nod yes then only a transaction is we'll executed up. on on the network and then, and then it is stored so that's that's one way to look at it uh when we go deep drill down into it how it becomes so popular is because again it also uh supports cryptography you know uh, saving all your data cryptographically inside the server so even if somebody can peek inside it they cannot you mean the use encryption the data. part the encryption part yes right, absolutely right. correct so can can you tell us more about the encryption part like uh, that makes it secure but mm -hmm. what exactly is happening in the system sure sure so basically with every blockchain there is a genesis record the first mm -hmm. record that gets created uh, uh, on the blockchain and then every other record start getting linked with the previous record so there is a genesis record then there is the second transaction that gets done so what happens is it get interlinked with the previous transaction hashes there and then when the third transaction happen that get interlinked with the second transaction so that's how they start creating a chain of it uh, a chain of uh, data storage there that's why it is called blockchain because it creates a block of a transaction and then it uh, links that block with the previous block so uh, security wise if somebody needs to hack first thing is uh, you know it's practically not possible because uh, somebody has to hack all the servers exactly at the same time at the same millisecond uh, on on the system 
and second they would also need to hack down the system in a way that the previous data is also hacked so you just can't go and pick up a data set and delete it or change it you really right. have to go down to the genesis record which is practically impossible to do that yeah yeah that's the chain of the system and i think yes. that's the technology that actually yeah yeah talking about so great so this was the past that's how it started so if we look forward like the future actually how do you see a lot of people say uh, blockchain is the future of the finance so what do you have to say about that it is absolutely the future because uh, people are uh, moving away from uh, the old school banking system where you have to if you have to deposit money you have to go to a bank and then you have to deposit the money over there they will uh, they will charge you some bit of uh, fees whether you are paying cash or you are transacting like we have seen you know whether you make nfts or rtgs uh, or uh, uh, you know uh, check transfer now check transfer is free i mean of course there used to be a charge as well you know you uh, you write a check it get bounced there you pay money to the banking there so everything was centralized with the banks uh, every you were dependent on banks so if the bank is not open you really cannot do much you cannot take out your money today we do have atms but what if there is uh, you know the atm is out of money you really have to wait for bank to fill that atm and then you can withdraw the money over there the defi the decentralized finance there we have uh, i can send you money immediately and mm -hmm. it doesn't really needs to come from uh, you know from my bank to another bank to another bank and then there is a central uh, there is no central authority there. actually to yes. approve it or to intervene correct also. because i am sending it directly to, to you, you straight away to your it's wallet it's like so. you are giving me the money okay parvati take this money yes. and i just take it and you just take it you yeah. don't really have to go through the multiple <laughs> so it's actually there. that simple it, it is pretty much simple yeah. i just need your uh, wallet address uh, so there is there is something called wallet yeah. uh, which uh, stores uh, so basically uh, wallet is something which is reading the data from the blockchain okay. over your account and then it is showing what balance you have so it doesn't really store people say that uh, you know wallets are storing the currencies but it's, it is actually reading a blockchain okay. and then showing your account details over there it's like everything is being stored in the blockchain there and uh, in that uh, it has an address uh, your wallet address and then all i need is your wallet just like your bank account number yeah, you know? yeah but with bank account number i need your bank details your ifc code and you have to code. register with the bank and stuff you register with the bank and everything yeah, yeah. this and is all quick and they control your money and they control your money and then they earn on top of your money <laughs> yeah they do they do yeah. so here we are earning from the money yes. isn't it yes yeah. you can you can actually use your uh, funds to uh, yield uh, to lend your money to uh, different people you can earn interest on top of your uh your your holding straight away rather than going to a bank and they deciding yeah. whether they want to give you 6% on fixed deposits 5% yeah. on fixed deposit yeah. in here you and me together can talk about uh short term finance long term, -term finance, finance. Yeah. uh what kind of interest rate would uh i charge or you charge if i take money from you and then everything is being done through smart contracts so it's yeah. not between you and me two me. people talking Correct. everything what we discuss will be put in into a smart contract mm -hmm. will be deployed on the, onto the blockchain and then that smart contract executes so it's like yeah. black and white zeros and one there is no gray area over there yeah. uh, there will be a time limit you yeah. pay me my money back i yeah. pay your collaterals back it's very simple there yeah yeah and it stays there forever and it stays there forever so yeah. nobody uh, tomorrow nobody can say ki oh the banks are getting shut yes. so you nobody can say okay this money it's getting shut so it, you are not going to get correct it. correct yeah. we have seen uh, in uh, in in banking industry you know some banks get uh, closed down and other banks Uh, buy them out and then you know they do the transition yeah. phase yeah. here and everything and then you know it's their call so we also see uh, you know in quite recent times with this war that has bring uh, uh, brought uh, uh, although it's a, it's a very sad moment in the history of events but one thing you know there is a there is a shining light uh, specifically for uh, the decentralized uh, community mm -hmm. uh, we saw that when russia was uh, is invading uh, ukraine yeah, yeah, you know yeah. their funds were being uh, held uh, by many countries there yeah us yeah i mean there were us there were european countries they were doing yeah. that and yeah. uh, uh, but what kept them going was the uh, decentralized the cryptos uh, you know okay. uh, people could still transfer money from okay. their wallet because you really cannot control the blockchain or the crypto company yeah, there yeah. you know no you cannot uh, at max somebody can shut down the servers within that geographical region yeah. but they can not go and uh, tell uh, 20000 or 100000 people to shut down their servers, servers out of their jurisdiction you know yeah. some they they can just control us and their states 
Thank you so much for being in the studio. Thank you so much, Rohit, for taking your time out and speaking to us, sharing your views. I'm so enlightened and I'm so happy. And actually, I'm looking forward for more detailed chats, okay, in future, so that we talk more in deep about the technology. Thank you for having me here. <laughs> yeah, Thank so that's you. a commitment I want from yours. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Call me anytime. <laughs> wonderful, wonderful. So this was a wonderful chat on Crypto Masters. I'm your host, Parvati Nirvan, signing off for now. And I'm soon going to join you again with more and more guests on blockchain technology. Thank you so much. Have a good time.